This is One on One. We're pleased to welcome Katie Myler, founder and CEO of an organization called More Than Me. How are you doing? Amazing. Uh, More Than Me is? An organization that's helping Liberia to rebuild the education system so that every single little girl has access to her basic human rights. How'd you hook up with this organization? I just start, what, you started it. Yeah, I started it. I'm because, the if, hold on, you're from beautiful Somerset, New Jersey, otherwise known as horse country, and Liberia comes into it how? Um, when I was 23 years old, my first job out of college was in Liberia. So I got assigned to live there, almost like a Peace Corps situation. Mm -hmm. And I got there and I was, you know, was living in a remote village and I'd come back to the city. And when I'd get into the city, I met a little girl. I met kids that were working on the streets and they were selling. That was their full-time job, working. And I met an 11-year-old girl named Abigail who was literally giving oral sex for clean drinking water. And she asked me to help her go to school. And I couldn't walk away. So I helped Abigail go to school. She brought more kids and more friends. And I was telling my friends back in New Jersey, to, you know, I was sharing their stories, sending their photos. They were wiring me money, and it turned into the organization more than me. So is it largely focused on education for these children, for these girls? It's what they wanted. They asked, the, the girls, it started off that way. The girls asked me to help them go to school, and I did. And the schools that they were going to weren't good enough. They, you know, they weren't really learning. The teachers weren't there. Uh, so they, we ended up starting our own school. So it became the first free all-girls academy in Liberia. It was so exciting. The president of Liberia, the first female president in Africa. Right. A lot of people don't realize this, but Liberia was actually formed by freed American slaves. So it's this mm. like big connection to the United States. And so she said, thank you for your service to my country. And as long as you're serving the children of Liberia for free, you can have this building. And so she gives me this like bombed out looted building. Um, and we turned it into the first free all girls school. Mm. Um, it became a leading school in the country. It was so exciting. Um, and then unfortunately Ebola hit. Describe the change. Well, at first we thought we could wait and see what would happen. Um, but then unfortunately we couldn't wait anymore. Ebola hit the neighborhood where all my students live. We had over 100 students, 150 students living in this neighborhood. So we turned the school into an Ebola outreach center and we bought ambulances. We took in abandoned children. We provided home health care teams and, uh, and we did everything we could to work with communities to, to fight to make sure that our girls would stay alive. Um, after six months on the front lines of Ebola, um, we were changed, I was changed. I mean, it wasn't just running, you know, the ambulance services and all this, it was like, our, our plan was do everything you can to keep people alive and when you can do nothing else, sing and bring dig dignity and death. So we mm. were praying and singing with a lot of people while they passed away. Um, and it changed, it, I mean, seeing that much death, especially, um, especially for young children, really, I'll never be the same person again. People watching right now, public broadcasting, Fios, digital platforms, what do you want them to take away from this conversation right now? And more importantly, what can they do? Yeah, I think now what ended up, you know, I, after watching all that death, we realized that the root cause of sexual exploitation of young women is the same root cause that, of why Ebola had the toll that it did. Um, and it's that there's, you know, the systems in Liberia are broken and, fra That's you know, right. they're so fragile. So we're helping rebuild the entire education system. We now went from one school to seven. Our plan is to go to 500 schools in the next five years wow. um, and reach 20 percent of Liberia's kids. Um, and we need we need help. So, I mean, people can we use social media as a big piece of, of how we share what we're doing so they can follow our work and see what we're doing. But most importantly, um, the number one way to help is to become a monthly sponsor. And what we call that is the 2021 Collective. What does that mean? And uh, it's by the year 2021. Uh, we're we're going to reach 20 percent of Liberia's kids and open these 500 schools. It's 250,000 kids. Uh, but we have to raise twenty five million dollars to do it, which sounds like a crazy number. Uh, but if you break it down, it's 10,000 people giving 40 bucks a month for five years. And then the long-term costs are actually absorbed by the government. So it's, we, we don't need to raise additional money after that $25 million. So we are doing it, but we need help. It's, wow. More Than Me has always been about living for something bigger than yourself. Um, it's, it's every day, wherever you are. It's in this moment. It's here in New York City, in New Jersey, wherever. But it's also, you know, it's also about contributing to, to a world that's bigger than just us. Uh, last question. How did you know and when did you know that you had to do something that was more than you or about more than you? 
Yeah, I mean, there, I, there's a lot of different moments. I think one, the one that comes you know, to mind first is like, I grew up, even though I grew up in a really wealthy community, my mom was a single mother of three who worked really hard making minimum wage. And um, when I was in high school, um, I went with my youth group to, we'd come to New York City to feed the homeless. And we would do everything we could. So you'd go to old folks' homes and sing. I played yeah. guitar like Phoebe from Friends. <laughs> and it felt really good to, to get over the, our own struggles and challenges that we faced in our family yeah. and to, to live and love others. Well, you're doing good stuff, and your mom did a good job. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank, Thank you, Steve. You. Great job. Yes. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Georgian Court University, Suez, Summit MD Anderson Cancer Center, Qualcare Inc., Johnson & Johnson, Gary's Wine and Marketplace, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.